Everyone, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Good evening, Eve. Thank you very much. This is a regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Montclair and is being broadcast live on Channel 34 and is streaming live on the Montclair TV 34 YouTube channel. It is available on demand and can and will be rebroadcast. This meeting is called pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. This meeting was included in the annual notice of the meeting schedule as set forth in Resolution R21210 adopted by the Council at its conference meeting of November 15th, 2021, 20, 20, uh, advertised in the official newspaper on December 30th, 2021, and January 6th, 2022, posted on bulletin boards outside of the municipal building and has remained continuously posted there. In addition, a copy of this revised annual notice is and has been made available to the public and is on file in the office of the Township Clerk. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, uh, roll call, please. Councilor Cummings. Present. Deputy Mayor Herlock. Present. Councilor Price Abrams. Present. Councilor Russo. Absent. Councilor Schlager. Here. Councilor Yacobellis. Present. Mayor Spiller. Present. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we're going to move to, uh, we'll, we'll drop the agenda of flexibility. Next is public comment. All speakers uh, must complete the sign-in sheet. Please remember that right next to the sign-in uh, uh, spot over there. Next to the podium before addressing the council, please limit your comments to three minutes. If you wish uh, to comment on a pending ordinance the, uh, listed on tonight's agenda, there will be a hearing for each of those, and you can make your comments at, this, at that time. With that, I'll open it up to public comment. There we go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate, again, the opportunity to be here and speak at this forum. Uh, a couple of months ago, I'm Norman Solomon, a resident of Montclair. I'm on the board of the League of Women Voters of the Montclair area, and I'm also the chair of the League of Women Voters Environmental Committee. Um, a couple of months ago, I was here and I asked about the progress that was being made to replace the environmental coordinator or whatever the position is going to be known as going forward, and uh, I got some answers from you in the interim. I've spoken with some of my peers who do what I'm doing, which is lead local groups that are envi uh, environmentally active, and there's kind of a malaise that this thing that I know will happen will ever happen. There's some folks that we've been waiting so long for this position to be filled. Mayor Spiller, you were very um, clear that the work has been accomplished to some degree during the interim time, but we're interested now that I understand that the position has been funded for the next two years. Can you give me some, or give us, some clear indication of what is to be expected and when that position will, in fact, be filled, and someone will be representing this city's interests in terms of um, sane direction for its environmental issues? Sure, thank you. First and foremost, I will note, I'll turn it over to Mr. Stafford, but uh, good news, there are a number of individuals helping to make sure our uh, environmental issues are addressed. I know the Environmental Commission very well. They do a phenomenal job, and their co-chairs are excellent and help guide, and quite frankly, they've been doing a lot of the pieces in terms of our sustainable jersey work and other things as part of that task force and mm -hmm. committee work that they do. So um, that is ongoing, as a side note. Our job as a council is to make sure budgets are passed and positions are funded. As you note, we've, we've taken our actions. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Stafford, and you can uh, opine and inform as to when the position you anticipate being filled. The job advertisement is in the hands of Human Resources Resources and the Department of Health and, and Human Services director uh, being perfected. I had a meeting about that this afternoon. I expected to be it to be posted in the next five to seven days, and for the posting to run through the I think the last day of July, business day is July 29. Okay. At which point, resumes, covers will be called, reviewed, and interviews would commence. Do you have uh, an idea when you think the position will be filled? Assuming that you get quality applicants. That, that's the determining factor. So if we are able to get, if we get resumes that, that uh, are from qualified candidates, we would interview in August uh, and look to a point as soon as possible thereafter. Okay. It's usually at least a two interview process. And one last question, and that is the funding that uh, I understood there was two years of funding provided, is that from and after the date of acquisition of an individual or is that already ticking away on us? We fund by the calendar year, so I'm not sure from what you're based on, on what you're basing your- I'm not basing anything I'm asking. 
When, will it, no, so I mean, it be, I don't know what you're basing your statement of two years on. So we fund on the calendar year. Oh, okay. So we fund, we have a budget that the council adopted for the year 2022. Everything starts again January 1 of 2023. And so that position would be up for funding or non-funding at that time? Well, I have no, yes, but I have no reason to think like anything else that the, that the position wouldn't be funded for Great. 2023 or going forward. Thank you for the update. I appreciate it. Good evening. First time. Um, my name is Nat Testa. I'm a bid board member and I am a resident on Glenridge Avenue and a property owner. It's 179. I'm in a building between uh, the church on my left and the Crosby on my right. I like to say between heaven and hell, but it's a little, a little, little bit of both there. I, I kind of like the tension. Um, uh, about a month ago, two or three weeks ago, I, I received a uh, certified mail piece from my neighbors at Crosby notifying me that they were going to um, add a couple of hundred square feet uh, of uh, structure to their property. And this certified mail gave me intel on um, uh, the architect and um, the scope of work, um, the lawyers and so forth and an opportunity to come here to express any grievance or any interest that would, uh, anything that might affect me. I got the same note from uh, my neighbor across the street who's putting a, a third floor in his building. But uh, could it be possible that a structure as large as what I see every day um, uh, be uh, uh, created and uh, built without much if any, notification. I, I don't re remember seeing anything in the mail from the town that would say, hey, we've got something, come on in, let's talk about what your concerns are, and uh, so forth and so on. I feel, for me, there wasn't a great inconvenience. I kind of enjoyed the process. It was an amazing thing to watch go, go up. It was noisy and so forth. But my tenant downstairs who relies on um, the Good Bottle Refill Shop, as you referenced there, sir, um, uh, relies on parking, and we know that that parking lot, uh, there must have been dozens and dozens of spots that were taken away, of which she would count on for her uh, business, a destination business. Um, now she's one business competing with, for four different spots in, on the avenue. Um, so I feel, feel badly for her, um, but also for the residents and the property owners on Bloomfield Avenue who, who've had to uh, kind of endure uh, the, the uh, the, the, the construction and um, the, uh, it seems like the inaccessibility of some of their property. I, I actually, back 100 years ago, lived in an apartment at, at uh, 405, and I used to park my car back there. And I guess those spots are all gone, and everything back there seems to have been uh, taken away from uh, the business as, and the, the property owners. And I just hope that moving forward with other structures of this size, that um, the township considers more closely the needs and uh, the wants of those people that are surrounding it, much like they ask my neighbor to consider me when he adds a small addition, a small addition to his property. Thank you. Thank you, and appreciate those insights. I'll just share also, while um, not specific for this board or to be planning board or one of the others, that, that's something that, that would move to. And they usually do notice, and as you know, right? So I'm um, not sure what their notices that they sent or not, but it wouldn't technically be this body, but uh, certainly one of our, our, our land use uh, boards, our planning board, uh, should be the one that approves that and then notices you or lets you know about that. So offer your insights there because they are then reviewing the size, what it looks like, all the things you noted. Uh, they would be debating that at those, at those meetings. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, guys. Good evening. My name is Lewis Cohen. I'm the general manager of Ascend New Jersey Montclair location. Ascend successfully opened its doors for the sale of medical cannabis in 2021 after taking over the former Greenleaf Compassion Center Medical Dispensary located at 395 Bloomfield Avenue, which opened its doors in 2012. In August 2021, the township amended its ordinance to permit the sale of adult use cannabis as overwhelmingly approved by the township residents. On May 3rd, the Township Council issued to send a resolution of support to the cannabis CRC 
Cannabis Regulatory Commission, and on May 24th, the CRC voted to approve Ascend's license for adult use sales. As you guys know, Ascend opened the doors of its Montclair dispensary for adult use cannabis sales on June 6th. Upon receiving notice from the township attorney that Ascend should discontinue adult use sales, Ascend immediately complied with the town's directive. Ascend would like to apologize to the mayor and council of the township of Montclair, as well as all of the township officials for these events. We remain committed to being a great partner to the town as we continue to serve our medical patients and look forward to bringing more union-paying jobs and significant tax dollars to the community when we can commence adult use sales. Ascend hopes to regain any trust lost by reaffirming its commitment here to the values of the township of Montclair. With this apology, Ascend would like to turn a new page in this partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that statement, and certainly we do appreciate the uh, the apology. Um, certainly, note you know for the record, I know our attorney had conversations with your attorney and others prior to you opening for sale. So I know you noted that as soon as you heard from the township, you ceased sales. Uh, we know we communicated prior to that. I think it's been noted and publicly as well. Um, you know how that then continued is a is a little bit of I think the issue. Maybe why you're here as well. Um, we do appreciate you being here, but just for the record, wanted to note that. Uh, th that information was conveyed in advance. I, I was on some of those CRC meetings as, as mayor to, to have that conversation, specifically noted that we were supporting you um, in terms of a, 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 a state level approval, but noted that you still needed your local level approval. I noted that on those meetings. Um, but that said, you know, we are in this position now. We're going to be looking at your, like everyone else's application. I can certainly say, won't speak for and, and bias the, uh, any of the opinions there, but we are going to look at the social benefits and some of the other pieces that are part of those application processes. And uh, we will move on from there. But thank you very much for coming tonight. We do appreciate your statement. So thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Tom Donahue. I am from the UFCW Local 360. Uh, we're the official cannabis labor union. Uh, I just wanted to come and talk in support of Ascent getting approved for adult rec. Um, their floor supervisors recently organized with us uh, looking for better wages uh, and better benefits. Uh, with them being able to go to adult use, it would make these workers' lives a lot easier. Uh, first off, the business that would come in, we we're able to negotiate contracts that uh, would benefit these workers. Uh, along with those benefits and being a member, things like educational benefits and things like uh, along those lines. So uh, definitely, in my personal opinion, you guys should support them in uh, converting to adult use. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. My name is Penny Carey, and I live on Bellevue Avenue. I want to talk about senior centers and why the seniors in Montclair are beginning to feel like Charlie Brown if the township council is Lucy, who keeps removing the football as he tries to kick it after promising time after time that this time she will continue to hold it. Several years ago, when I was serving on SCAC, SCAC was asked by the then mayor to research different models of senior centers. Some of you may remember when we did that. Um, and recommend the model best suited for Montclair. We selected one example of each of the most popular type of senior center. Purpose-built exclusively for seniors. Purpose-built community centers for all ages but accessible to all. And the reuse of existing space as well as different funding options, all municipal or a combination of government and private fundraising, dues required and free to residents. I was in the group assigned to visit Princeton, which was the model we eventually recommended to the town council. We were offered the option of Edward Edgemont Park Fieldhouse, which we rejected on several counts. It was not large enough for varied programs. It's basically one room. Um, it, was, had, it was not centrally located, and there was not enough parking. But a private group was willing and eager to fund the, the re renovations, so the city moved ahead with un the understanding that it was to be temporary 
Senior Activities Center as it is today, then when the United Way was convinced that they could not sell the social agency's building because they did not actually own it, the first floor was proposed as an alternative. It was admirably suitable. The building had been left to the citizens of Montclair by a local philanthropist in 1926. The community chest was named the steward of the building. They were to collect the rents from local nonprofits and use that money to maintain the building over the years. The community chest and later its successive United Way did A, but neglected B. The building was in need of serious infrastructure updates. A committee was formed to negotiate terms and oversee the updates. I even remember seeing architectural drawings prepared by an architect, but with no public notice, the negotiations stalled and were eventually canceled. Next, we heard that the county was going to renovate and expand the field house in Glenfield Park. It is also a small facility with inadequate parking and not centrally located. We have heard variously that it is to be open to the whole county or that it is to be used only by residents of the immediate neighborhood. In any event, there has been no consultation with local senior groups. Sorry. If you, yeah, no, if you can go ahead and try. You want to uh, hear the rest? Let's, let's hear the rest. I'll be really quick. <laughs> right, okay. I, yes, thank you. Um, except for the current LESOR, the Neighborhood Development Corporation, and no action. Although I did notice today when I was driving past it that there's a red, white, and blue sign right in front of the school, which may uh, imply federal funding for, but I don't know whether it's for the school or for the um, field house. I'm urging the council to collaborate with all of the seniors representing organizations in Montclair and to imp implement a centrally located, accessible senior t center, air conditioned and large enough for multiple uses with office space for all the organizations, classrooms, meeting rooms, recreational space, a commercial kitchen and an eating area and a performance space. I assure you that they will participate since they are all represented by the Montclair uh, advocacy uh, collaboration for aging. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Purple is the senior color. <laughs> I'll just remind everyone too, I know our clerk will really appreciate this, just don't forget to sign in after you speak at least, or not before, but just remember to do the sign in so we have it for official records. Thank okay. you. Sign in a second time? No, it just is. reminding everybody okay. as they come up. Yeah. I'm Yai Packard. I'm a property owner at 18-30 South Fullerton Avenue, a Montclair resident living at 16 Madison Avenue, and come here today as president of the Montclair Center Business Improvement District. Two of my duties as president is to represent and advocate for our roughly 450 downtown businesses and property owners. It's those duties that bring me here today. Um, first, I want to thank you all for the support you and the entire township staff provided toward the Pride Festival downtown on June 11th. It was an amazing day, and I want you all to know that the cooperation assistance that you and the township personnel provided was much appreciated. However, I too am here to implore you to get a handle on whatever is keeping the Glen Ridge parking deck closed and to open it as soon as possible. If I hired a contractor to do an addition to my kitchen and the day of expected completion came and went, I'd want to know why I couldn't use my new kitchen, particularly if I didn't see or hear any work being done on it. I'd already be tired of eating out or using a hot plate. Most of all, I'd want to get to know when I was getting access to it. You've heard about the challenges the closed deck has provided for surrounding businesses. I'd like you to think about the challenges our ambassador team faces every day because of refuse accumulation on Bloomfield Avenue, a growing rat problem, and garbage scattered on the sidewalks of that block because receptacles can't be picked up from the rear. The bid works hard to present a welcoming, positive impression for our immediate neighbors and long distant visitors alike, and this stretch of Bloomfield Avenue isn't providing that impression right now. I'd like to suggest that clear communication about Glenridge Deck would be a great start in the right direction on your part. Let's all, let us all know what to expect. 
That way, we can at least know how much longer we'll be eating off the hot plate. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, certainly, and uh, as, as we all note, I think in your example, unfortunately, a lot of times you are going over and with a contractor when they're doing work in your house, which is frustrating, we know. But Mr. Stafford, maybe you can give an update uh, as to current status and uh, what the latest is and people can expect. Of course. Thank you. The Midtown deck is complete with the exception of a compliance issue concerning uh, ADA handicap van parking. Without that compliance complete, our deck can't receive a certificate of occupancy. Currently, the um, deck's compliant van parking leads to the existing alleyway toward Bloomfield Avenue. The deck itself is compliant. The alleyway is not. The alleyway was not obviously part of the Midtown deck construction and was obviously put in place years before the deck construction. It does not meet current ADA standards for compliance. Um, the alleyway is in a historic area of town and its elevations can't be modified greatly to meet current ADA standards. Our building department, which is, which is a quasi-independent state-related agency, although they are situated in the township, uh, has denied the issuance of a certificate of occupancy without that alleyway meeting compliance uh, in connection with ADA requirements. Uh, at this point, as I understand the latest, uh, the Department of Community Affairs has favorably received uh, a uh, plan, uh, an, an, uh, an informal plan, uh, with respect to um, getting as compliant as we possibly can with respect to ADA required, required entrances and exits. Uh, our engineers, our land use board engineers have reviewed the plans, uh, the informal plan uh, and alleyway elevations and have provided their opinions with respect to existing condi conditions and uh, possible resolutions. And again, the Department of Community Affairs at the state level has informally favorably received those plans. What will happen now is that the uh, formal plans will be sent to our building department uh, and if necessary to the Department of Community Affairs at the state level for review of uh, sealed drawings and technical specifications in order to bring in a contract to as best as possible uh, reconstruct alley the alleyway and uh, this will be done on an exp as expedited a basis as possible uh, to meet compliance and to open as soon as possible. Unfortunately, I don't have a um, date certain. I don't even have a proposed date because we're in that planning, informal planning stage and we're subject to the review by the independent quasi state building department, subcode officials. And that's the way it must be. That's the way it always is. That's the way it is in uh, the 564 uh, other municipalities in, this, in the state. Um, so although I'd very much like to be able to tell folks, first, first of all, like everyone, I'd like the deck to be open yesterday. But second of all, I'd like to, to be able to tell folks, this is the date certain. I can't do that right now. We're in the, um, we've gotten informal approval or at least favorable reception, we will now move toward as quickly as possible formal approval on all levels. Thank you, Mr. Stafford. I think that's uh, would you, I, think, I think that's about as detailed as we can give and uh, I think goes over the rationale and the reason why you see the delay there and certainly what we're all frustrated by, but that's the explanation. That's why it came about and we're working in an expeditious, an expedited manner to make sure that uh, that's resolved as quickly as possible. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Stafford, thank you for that update. Um, there are some incongruous points to what you said because the building department reviews the plans early on and sends inspectors out on multiple occasions prior to a final inspection. So it's somewhat strange that we are months late here and only now is this issue being developed and reviewed. You mentioned that the alleyway was not part of the building itself but it's being flagged after the fact. So there's a complete disconnect here as to why that is tying up the approval of the deck. That's the first issue. Could you please explain that? Why this was not picked up sooner by the building department, which goes out to the site multiple times, or the architect that created the plans that is supposed to look at the existing site conditions to begin with? 
I can't explain it, although I will, I, I have asked the appropriate officials to look at that. What I would liken it to is I, last week, in an effort to change an out-of-state automobile title to a New Jersey title, went to the division of, or the Motor Vehicle Commission, they think they're calling themselves now. I had made an appointment to go to the MVC on the MVC website for a very specific thing. They sent me to a uh, motor vehicle center. When I got there, I was told by the gatekeeper, they no longer do that. I'm at that facility. I made the appointment eight weeks ago, and three or four weeks ago, they changed the fact that they do that there. Again, I'd like it to be a perfect situation where we don't have this issue or that every uh, situation works as smoothly as it, it possibly can. This is an issue where it did not in an instance where it did not, and our folks are looking in to ensure that it doesn't happen in the future. But aren't we months late to begin with, even notwithstanding this particular project? Mr. Schwartz, I'll let you can give your comments because you have three minutes, and then as we've noted with the others, then we'll respond to them at that time. But give us all your questions, and Mr. Stafford will best try and address them at the end. Okay, if you want to do it that way. Could you please answer specifically who by name at either the township staff level or the council level was directly responsible for reviewing the proposed building plans, who was responsible for approving them with signature, who authorized the architect and the contractor to proceed, and who is directly responsible for overseeing the construction. Could you name those individuals? So, Mr. Stafford, I would say, I, yeah, I doubt you have that now. So, uh, that's something you can try and communicate if you have them. I, I, I even. don't know anybody on the council who was responsible for anyone, for anything. If anyone was, raise your hand. I, I, I don't know if that was the case. If you're asking me the name of the architect, uh, and Lee, I don't know if, you, if you'd like to send me an email, Martin, with your questions, I'll be happy to do my best to have answers provided. Uh, okay, final question. Uh, in your opinion, uh, was there any failure by either the architect of record, the private construction manager or supervisor involved, such that their errors and omissions policy would kick in effect for any remediation that we have to undertake. I don't know that that's the case. Okay. Um, in your opinion, is there any failure by any member of the staff or any member of the, the um, supervising management in reviewing this project? I don't know that that's the case. Okay. Hi, that's uh, Matt Horrigan. Um, I'm here uh, on behalf of uh, uh, a board member with the uh, Mont Montclair uh, uh, bid. <clears throat> Craig uh, from Diamond Cycle came into one of our meetings, I guess it was a few weeks ago, a month ago, and he pleaded with us at the board level to come in and um, advocate. For him, his business is down 70 or 80 percent. So that's primarily why I'm, why I'm here to. to plead with you guys to do whatever you can to open this parking deck, okay? So I have a little bit of experience in construction. So you either have a, a major structural issue, why you're not opening it, or you've got an ingress and egress issue. If it's ingress and egress, it should be relatively simple to fix. You could open the first floor. Um, you guys upstairs have the building department. Sit with them, say, what can we legally open today to help, help, these, uh, help these businesses? Um, Maybe you do one lane in, one lane out, and then you have uh, handicap egress and ingress where you normally would drive in and put some jersey barriers. There's creative ways to do it. I think uh, Mr. Stafford and your staff can come up with something creatively with, uh, with the architect and figure this out. I can tell you right now, if it was a private project, we'd be open, okay? Not assuming it's an egress and ingress, egress and ingress issue. If it's a structural issue, you know, all bets are off. But. I'm assuming it's egress and ingress, okay? So I'd ask you to, you know, get creative and help, help these guys out, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, nope, nope. You can, you can, A, you can come on up if you're trying to do it. You can, you can answer, but, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying you just can't yell it from there, so everyone's got to hear. <laughs> Just getting this email up. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Okay. Glad to be feeling better tonight. 
and able to be here. My name is Ahava Felicidad. I'm the president of the Tenants Organization of Montclair, the group responsible for with the entire township and community rent control going through finally. On May 3rd, I announced that TUM, the Tenants Organization of Montclair, would continue and at minimum hold monthly meetings. I'm sorry. I wasn't able to be here at the podium on the last two meetings, a combination of not being 100%. And then the June 13th was a screening for a new intern for us, and that went really well. I'm here to re-communicate our role now that we have rent control. So now that we have rent control, we will continue to hold monthly meetings to train leaders in buildings for blocks and street captains, everyone who wishes to do this. There will be office hours for intake. This already existed. Um, not much has changed, it's just to recommunicate. And for some, maybe a first time that they're hearing if they're not been a part of our internal communications. I'm gonna define intake. Um, that's for when tenants need help. Uh, with layman's terms of their rights, uh, not legal advice, but guidance, and sometimes just pulling bullet points from chapters and identifying areas where we can help with what's written in the tenant's rights handbook, but not to give legal advice, which we're not allowed to do. But we can use the handbook to help those who are just, as I've been told many times, and we've helped a lot of people just kind of hone in on that page or those pages and help them work through um, whatever their concern is. At the same time, they can join us for intake for NJTO membership. Our membership is a discounted rate. The charter for um, TUM gives a $4 per household rate compared to a $25 uh, member fee with NJTO, and we do have a charter. We provide resources such as to legal aid, volunteer lawyers for justice, Seton Hall's law housing project, and also NGO, NJTO for anything beyond what we can help them with in the manual. A second person has to be on a call. Alternatively, we offer recorded calls, so referrals to resources. We will minimum post two times to Facebook. This would include our cover and profile photo, which we find work um, really well to not flood the page with a lot of extra content. People just kind of want to be able to go there and find out when there's a meeting. That goes out in email blast first internally to the group before it gets posted to Facebook. They will be blogging managed by an available intern, rent control specific videos to highlight handbook sections done by a volunteer or intern. They have a two-part approval process. We'll continue to collect membership dues and attend some council meetings. We'll be fielding suggestions of what is felt we should be doing to help. Nothing is written in stone. This is an ever-changing process. This is what is in place for now. We'll soon be in the process of requesting more two members to join us as VPs so we can grow our unified organization. And we'll continue to look at ways that we can be better. Lastly, I'd like to just request that the E-Code 360 be updated with the current ordinance. The old one is still there. Some people actually do search for it there. When you Google search Montclair rent control ordinance, at least on my phone, uh, iPhone, but I'm, re I'm accessing this on a regular basis and I'm not a techie, it comes up for me. The website and the E code 360, I'm familiar with that. So the old ordinance is there and needs to be replaced with the new one. I could not find that even yesterday. And I ask that the link to the website be fixed as well. It's not working. So when you go to the page that has the, the house and it says rent control ordinance, the first link that says click here to go to the ordinance doesn't work. The summary link works. And then in the summary link, you can click another link to get to the ordinance. That's a lot of drilling in. So I just ask that that be updated um, this week. I'm not saying like got to do it tonight, but I, whatever process there is, it would be great whenever those pages change that the links be double checked that they're going to the right place and not going to a blank page. Thank, Thank you. you all and have a good night. Thank you.
and Mr. Stafford, if you work with our webmaster to update as appropriately as uh, appropriate. I'm sure Mr. Scandalberry heard the issue and, and will work on the link, but what I will tell uh, Ms. Felicidad and, and everyone else is e-code, though it uh, ordinances With respect to, I'm sorry, got to. Yes, I am checking because I requested that the codification be expedited. It normally takes four to six weeks, sometimes eight weeks, but I did request that it be expedited, so I'm just going to check because as of this morning, it should have been updated. And Mr. Trafford, just confirm, just, just uh, if your microphone's on too and you're, you're speaking, I'm not sure if it was, was it? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Council. Uh, I'm William Scott. I'm the co-chair of the Montclair Housing Commission, and I'm also the chair of the NAACP Housing Committee, and I am a 72-year resident of Montclair. I live at 23 Cedar Avenue. On, there will be a rent control presentation, Zoom presentation, on Monday, June the 27th at 7 p.m. for the Tenants Educational Workshop with Joan Pransky, tenant advocate and attorney on the new Montclair Rent Control Ordinance. This uh, Zoom meeting will be hosted by the Montclair Branch NAACP Housing Committee and also the New Jersey Tenants Organization. This workshop will review the Montclair Rent Control Ordinance and provide tenants with an understanding of their rights and responsibilities. I've sent each of the council members, uh, in addition to uh, you, Mayor, uh, Mr. Scandalberry, Mr. Barr, uh, Mr. Stafford, uh, a copy of the information to go through the registration process. If you like to attend the presentation, I'm sure all of uh, you folks are familiar with Joan Pransky, uh, who worked hand in hand with uh, the town council, uh, also the property owners association attorney, Mr. Gormley, in creating the current rent control ordinance. Uh, we're not trying to take anyone's uh, responsibility away. We just feel that uh, these workshops will be very helpful to tenants uh, moving forward. And by utilizing uh, some of the uh, folks that were involved in creating the ordinance who have firsthand uh, understanding and knowledge, we should be able to prevent, not prevent, but present the presentation of the rent control ordinance. Uh, and uh, hopefully we may have multiple workshops and we're looking into also having a workshop uh, for the Spanish-speaking community. Uh, and matter of fact, I'd like to make a suggestion uh, that we have the ordinance uh, provided in Spanish uh, on the township website. So uh, I know I'm going to be looking into getting a legal translation of the ordinance um, and if the uh, housing committee of the NAACP uh, approves it and it is certified, uh, I think we'll be able to put it up on our website, but we have to make sure we do it legally. But I think that that would be something very important for the township. Uh, we do have a very large Spanish community and I think we should have that document in that language so everyone can understand that, okay? I do have a question about the uh, redevelopment of, uh, I think it was 23 uh, block and lot, uh, block number 2311, lots 12, 14 and 15. Now, as I looked at those properties, uh, which are being considered as an area of redevelopment, two of the properties are two family houses occupied. Uh, one of the lots are vacant. I couldn't find the actual lot. It might be behind another lot. But I, I'm wondering what, is, uh, what was the request uh, for these uh, properties to be considered uh, areas of redevelopment? Because in, the town owns one, but the other two are privately owned properties. Uh, and I just would like to get a better understanding of what the process is uh, when these uh, properties are now coming up. I don't want to say on a regular basis for considering consideration for redevelopment, but as a member of the housing committee, you know, we'd like to have a heads up when we're talking about uh, areas of redevelopment and uh, areas that involve residential property. And uh, it's on the agenda as a, a consent item, so I don't believe there'll be any public uh, uh, comment uh, if it goes through as a, a consent agenda item. So uh, I don't think I'm asking the question now what's going on with that development. Thank you. Well, first off, Mr. Scott, I want to say uh, thank you for, uh, I, I am signed up, by the way, for the webinar. I want to try and listen as much as possible. But 
Um, it's good. More information out there, the better. So you're not, uh, you know, taking away from anyone doing that work. So thank you for that on the educational uh, uh, piece there. Uh, with regard to any redevelopment pieces, the, the township planner and others will look at a site, and specifically, especially if a township owns site, um, and then see what areas around it would best suit any type of redevelopment study to see what fits, what doesn't, what, what would work um, on a piece of property or contigu contiguous or related or area, area properties. Um, that recommendation goes to the subcommittee of the council. Subcommittee of the council reviews that and says, hey, is that a worthwhile thing that we'd recommend to our colleagues for an area redevelopment? We put that forward to the full council. Full council then decides to take a look at that, approve it, and then hopefully get information back on if something works there or if it doesn't and what would be suggested. So that's process, and that's how that flowed in this case as well. Anything my colleagues who are on that committee would like to add? I just want to say one thing. On sure. Councilman Yacht Bells. Thank you. Um, and I do think in tonight's packet, we're talking about the building that we're in now and the lot next door at PNC. That's what's on. So I, I just don't know where the thought about there being privately homed uh, privately owned homes in the mix there. That's not the case with the resolution that's on the agenda tonight. Um, in regards to um, what's been said in terms of the parking deck, I do want to comment um, that I do think we have an opportunity as a township to do a better job in terms of communication. So I do want everyone who's here to talk about that to hear that from me. I'm speaking only for myself. You know, to the extent we're aware of these things when they do happen, we can communicate it better to the stakeholders, to the community, so that you know what you're working with and, and you can plan based on that, even if it's bad news. Bad news is still news, it's still information. Um, so I know, I know Jason, you're going to get up in a minute and speak to that probably, and I know Yai and others, and um, I know Craig, you, you know, you guys are here from Diamond Cycle, and I, it's just absolutely awful to hear how how your business has been impacted and I've spoken to the folks at Good Bottle and I think at the very least um, we could have and should have done a better job with communicating even if we can't you know solve the issue because of what are legitimate reasons thank you just to steal a couple more seconds uh, the notification for the uh, workshop will be in the Montclair local it should be on Bernisternet and for those who have not received the uh, notice because uh, the uh, supporters of the rent control ordinance, the coalition, uh, there's about 15, 20 members of that coalition and different organizations and religious organizations, they will be sending out the notice uh, throughout their uh, different uh, organizations. And if for those who do not have it, if they want to go to the NAACP uh, website, the website address is https colon forward slash forward slash www.montclairnaacp.org. If you go right to that uh, website, uh, you can go through the pre-registration process as well. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Jason Gleason, Director of uh, Montclair Center Business Improvement District. Uh, it's unfortunate that I'm not able to spend my three minutes uh, where I wanted to this evening praising by name those of the township who did exemplary work behind the scenes for the Pride Festival. Uh, they often go unnoticed and unrecognized, uh, but alas, there are more pressing matters for our stakeholders. This is now the fourth time I've addressed the council and administration on the topic of the Glen Ridge parking deck, and I've lost count how many times behind closed doors. I hate to sound like a broken record here, but communication, communication, communication. The township's lack of Planning and communication with respect to this project over the last two years demonstrates a complete disregard for our businesses, property owners, and residents. Six months have now passed since the deck has been substantially complete. Six months have also passed without any effective communication, good news or bad. Bad news, when delivered early and often, at least allows people to plan. How can our stakeholders reasonably expect to make critical business decisions and sound plans with no information? You will hear many of their frustrations tonight. I think we all understand that things do not always go to plan. I think we understand that people aren't infallible. I think, especially after the insanity of the last two years, we all understand that thumb, some things are just out of our control. But the recent lack of transparency and the absence of communication up until 31 hours ago is completely unacceptable. Yesterday, I finally got a phone call from two people at the township that I will not name out of respect because ultimately, these continued issues have not been their fault, and the continued anger resulting after this should not be directed towards them. These gentlemen were directed to bring me up to speed on the deck. 
I was told the project had failed inspection by a local inspector due to ADA compliance issues surrounding the alleyway leading from Bloomfield Avenue and that the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs had directed the township to remove a gate and install a railing to satisfy inspection to get open, but still no ATA. Simple as that, right? Unfortunately not. The DCA doesn't inspect or regulate for ADA compliance. They only advise and only when ask, unless it's a state project. Again, I'm not killing the messengers for delivering the, uh, not delivering the whole picture here and or perpetuating poor communication from the top. They shouldn't have been the ones to call. Armed with more information from the Director of Division, and Codes and Sur of, uh, Division of Codes and Standards from the Office of DCA and our own planning office and others, I have a much clearer picture. It's actually very similar to the one that Mr. Stafford spoke tonight. Um, it's an unfortunate one for all of us, for the township, for the businesses, the property owners, for everybody. And I just don't understand why not communicate this. I, I really don't understand it. We're very appreciative that the town finally put out a clear and concise statement today on its website, but expecting that people would see it again demonstrates the lack of understanding of how to and or the willingness to communicate. No one watches TV 34. Your newsletter only captures roughly 7% of the population, and I would wager only a fraction of 1% of the businesses affected. By contrast, Paul Giordano from White Rabbit Black Heart effectively communicated his film shoot to the entire block of Glenridge Avenue today with zero complaints to my office. That's very rare. Craig Cornell from Diamond Cycle posted a non-disparaging post about tonight's meeting on Facebook just earlier today that go at over 600 likes and 70 plus responses. We at The Bid can email blast 100% of the affected businesses at the push of a button and I've repeatedly offered to deliver by hand, and we have on multiple occasions, just about any communication that the township prints. What we are advocating for is and always has been and always will be is better communication, better cooperation, consideration, and dare I say, teamwork. We are here in almost all cases to help. We have been willing to and able partners deliver even bad news for you, but please understand that as public servants, we both need to be accountable to the bid stakeholders. What we are not advocating for is that there be a rush to open the deck. It should be done right. It should be done to ensure safe access for people of all abilities in a way that doesn't flood, that doesn't freeze. It should be done in a way that ensures that we have an incredible public utility for years to come and all enjoy the benefits. We are looking forward to being across this finish line, but until the deck is completed, we at the bid and our stakeholders expect regular communication on the progress of this deck. If a member of the township is appointed to attend our meetings and we are able to update our members, that will suffice as well. If not, you can expect to see my ugly mug here every single meeting until the completion of the deck. And we also suggest in the future that the township appoint a singular project manager to oversee and communicate on behalf of the township with projects such as these. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Hello, how are you doing? My name is Craig Cornell. I am the owner of Diamond Cycle, 4 and I in Bloomfield Avenue. I would like to thank Jason for helping me out today. Um, Peter, thank you. Lori, she's reached out and tried to help. Uh, I have to say that I've reached out to Mr. Stafford numerous times and I've talked about communication, zero communication. I've asked him. What is going on? What is going on? My business is suffering terribly from this parking situation. And I, find, and I feel that there is no care for the businesses. That, that I've been there for 34 years. Diamond Cycle has been there 110 years. 110 years. I'm at risk of losing my business here from the incompetence of this project. Why? Why can't you communicate with me? Why? Why can't you reach out? Why? I invited you to come 
Look at what's going on here. Nothing. Nothing. Why? It's, it's very sad. It really is. Anything? from you, Mr. Cornell, I've asked that it be responded to. Mm -hmm. And if you're saying that never you've received a response, then I'm sorry for that and that's on me. I took matters in my own hands to make a safe passage to get to the back of my store so customers can get back there. And, and I, then I hear from you. I hear, you know, a legal, a threat that, you know, we're gonna have legal, comp, comp, you know, issues if I continue doing that. And I, and I respect that, but I did it to try and save my business here. And I feel that there's something that can be done here about finding a way to have access so people can get to the store easily. Nothing, nothing. It's been six months, six months, nothing. Not even try. I, last time I was here two months ago, I was in desperate situation here. And I asked, can I get some answers? Can I get answers? I got an answer the next day from Manny. I don't know when the parking deck's gonna be open. That was the answer I got. It's, it's terrible, terrible how, I, how I've been treated here. I hope this, we can move forward and get this thing done, and I hope they can communicate with me what they're gonna do back there, because we have all kinds of issues with taking away my parking as well. I have no way to get back there. The parking deck is too low. I can't get my vehicle back there. I have to cross other, my neighbor's properties to get to my property now. So there's some issues with that we have to take care of. So I hope at this point, there'll be better communication here. Hopefully, thank you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Eileen Birmingham. I'm a resident of Montclair. Um, this is now my, I don't know, third or fourth meeting where the, the businesses on Glen Ridge Avenue, I, it is tragic how you have been treated and I, 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 your frustration must be out, off the charts and I even feel funny taking the attention away from that topic because it is, is of such imp great importance. But I'm here to talk about the Glen Ridge Fire Agreement. And I read with interest Mayor Spiller's response to a reporter's question about the Glen Ridge Fire Agreement, an agreement in which Glen Ridge is contributing tens of thousands of dollars less for, for fire suppression than it was 10 years ago, effectively less than it was 30 years ago, while Montclair taxpayers are paying millions and millions of dollars more. Your response to the question about the agreement and the possibility of using the free state shared service office as other towns have done was, quote, frankly, it's not that complicated. We are analyzing internally, et cetera. Based on what has been happening in town lately, the idea of analyzing internally is a huge red flag. And I guess it is not that complicated, so Montclair residents would just accept that maybe Glen Ridge would pay even less than they are paying now if an internal analysis says, somehow says that our costs are covered. Please, can you share with all of us this magical formula in which costs for Montclair residents continue to escalate, but somehow Glen Ridge taxpayers would keep paying less? Can you tell me how I can pay less for anything that I was paying for 10 years ago? Can you tell me, as a resident who has never called the fire department, what does it cost to cover me compared to a Glen Ridge resident, and how do I get their deal? And is the plan to throw in additional playing fields to further woo Glen Ridge? And I guess it is not that complicated, so it is left for Montclair taxpayers to try and understand why our fire department has been so much bigger for the past decade than nearby larger towns like Bloomfield, and how our agreement with Glen Ridge has impacted staffing. We hired additional staff at the initiation of the Glen Ridge Agreement, and Glen Ridge has not come close to covering those costs. 
And so, Mayor Spiller, I would su respectfully suggest to you things are more complicated than you seem to believe. And I would turn to my Montclair neighbors and say, there is nowhere in the state of New Jersey in which a town's taxpayers are charged significantly more for their fire department while a neighboring town receives the same service for significantly less. This type of relationship does not exist anywhere else in New Jersey and probably the country. And there is certainly not a case where athletic fields are thrown in to sweeten the deal. The state has a free resource that helps towns negotiate fair deals and helps town of, towns avoid these imbalanced situations. Did you know that there can be state and federal grants in support of shared service agreements? But why should Montclair care about that when the taxpayer will take care of it, right? I called the shared state service office and spoke with someone there unofficially, but I will tell you, neighbors, that the man at the other end of the phone laughed out loud when he heard that Glen Ridge was paying less than they were paying 10 years ago. I note that according to Glen Ridge, Ridge's budget, they also appear to be paying less than us, paying us less for sanitary sewer service than they were three years ago. Enough is enough. This economic model that a small rich town gets to use the resources of a nearby town for pennies on the dollar compared to what the larger town residents pay should not be encouraged. Do not discount the cost of services for our fire department. Do not give away valuable field space. Our fire department offers a valuable service, and we should act like it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. June Regner from 49 North, North Mountain Avenue. I've been up here several times. This is my third time. Last time, thank you, Councillor Cunning Cummings, for answering me. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Councillor Yacobellis, for also at least letting me know he was thinking about my questions. I asked you a whole bunch of questions, and none of them have been answered. Now, the idea that you can't answer because of legal reasons is nonsense, and it's pretend, and it's an excuse. So I have watered down my last questions to only two. Do you feel good about your personal process you used when voting to retain the investigating firm to investigate the firefighting promotion? I'm not asking anything except for how you feel. Can feelings be part of a litigation? I don't think so. I don't think your lawyer thinks so either. I also want to know how every single one of you is very fond about talking about diversity and Black Lives Matter. Many of you were at the Juneteenth celebrations. Do you feel as though the way Montclair has treated their black firefighters is an example of your values? If not, you need to do something. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Spiller, council members, town manager, Mr. Stafford, other members of the council and the township. My name is Luella Dudley. I am the chairperson of Montclair Aging Advocacy Coalition. We are here this evening to inform you of our concern regarding the older adult population of Montclair. There is so much more that can be done to enhance services for these residents. In 2015, Montclair Township received the distinction of being recognized as an age-friendly township by AARP. This acknowledgement was based on the standards of AARP's eight domains of livability. The understanding was that Montclair would continue to work developing and maintaining the criteria for such a recognition. Under the directions of the uh, Director of Senior Services, the previous director of senior services, improvement of services were made. However, a new director was hired in June of 2021 and has been absent for more than six months, leaving a large gap in services. Why wasn't there an interim person identified during this period? There was a number of concerns raised by older adults that were left unresolved due to absence of the director. 
We have also been without a director of the Department of Health and Human Services for almost a year. When will a permanent director be hired? There still is a need for a social worker. The need for a full complement of staff is imperative in providing the ultimate level of services for which our residents so deserve. In conclusion, we recommend that a task force be formed to develop a comprehensive plan of action that addresses the myriad of issues and concerns related to the older population of Montclair. The task force should consist of the following, Department of Health and Human Services, Department of Senior Services, Department of Planning and Community Service, Department of Recreation and Cultural Affairs, the Fire Department, the Police Department, a grant writer, Montclair Aging Advocacy Coalition, Gateway to Aging in Place, Aging in Montclair, Montclair Neighborhood Development Corporation, Montclair Interfaith Clergy Association, Montclair African American Clergy Association, Mountainside Hospital, Montclair State University, Tony's Kitchen, and any other organization deemed appropriate. Thank you for your time, and I await your response regarding the development of this task force. Sure. Thank you. Councilman Eckbos. Uh, Ms. Dudley, can you provide a list uh, to the clerk so that we can get a copy of that? That's some uh, really good <laughs> rounding up of all the services and organizations in the town. Um, and to June, I do want to answer your first question, which is that this is just one example of one night's worth of what we have to vote on and go through, and, and everything is accompanied by memos. And, you know, I would just say when we hire law firms for things, I know I'm not doing a background check on the firm or looking into the relationship of the firm with the individuals or with the town. Historically, I rely on the staff frankly, to give us the best information for us to then make the best decision that we can. So I just want to say that so that you don't feel like your question isn't being answered. Um, and there's a lot to unpack there. So thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Aguilar. I live at 36 Hawthorne Place. You may know that as, as Hawthorne Towers. As many of you know by now, the building was uh, purchased several months ago by Rockledge Ventures, LS LLC. As many of you also know by now, tenants in the building have been experiencing significant issues. We've had loss of services, attempts to charge us for services that were previously included in our rent, reduction of cleanliness. Sometimes the hallways just smell of garbage, uh, to the most polite way I could say it. Uh, what we see is discrimination against some of our senior citizens in the building, lack of responsiveness from management, failure to complete repairs, or at minimum, a, a failure to even acknowledge that repairs were requested and the re they, requested the re uh, they received the requests. In a building where at least, I'd say at least 30% of the tenants are seniors, it's unconscionable that some of the units were without air conditioning during the heat waves that we had uh, a couple weeks ago. I think you remember it was like 92 degrees out, 94, and some folks had no air conditioning. We've got renovations that have been done without permits, including electrical work, which is absolutely terrifying, um, and attempts to intimidate tenants with threats of, quote, nuisance evictions. Um, when Rockledge's CEO, Mark Watkins, purchased the building, it's no exaggeration to say that living standards declined fast. A few weeks ago, Councillor Price Abrams, Montclair Housing Authority, uh, as well as representatives from TOOM met with tenants to hear our complaints, talk about our rights, and we're very grateful for that. So for, for those of you that are there, Councillor uh, Abram, Price Abrams and TOOM, and you guys are awesome. Um, what I'd like, and I know, uh, Councillor Iacobellis, I believe that you, you've got a date with some of our folks in the next two or three weeks, and really appreciate that. So my question is, and I know Mayor Spiller, we've talked about this a little bit, so you're aware, just looking for an update on how we're doing on uh, the rent control board and see if we got any traction on getting one settled. Yes, so we've been looking at that at each of the last uh, number of meetings and hopefully with some action tonight. Okay, oh, tonight, Yeah. that's good news. Thank you, have a good night. Thank yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, Tony Martin, um, a tenant advocate. I uh, did not intend to speak tonight. You've got a lot on your plates, and I don't want to add to it. But at mention of action on the rent control board tonight, I do want to say that I, I truly hope that you contemplate appointing people who have some working knowledge of the issues that are involved in this very complicated uh, field. Um, you know, um, I, I started from zero a few years ago, and um, I don't consider myself an expert now. But if you do appoint people who um, know the playing field, and uh, I think you know who they are, um, thank you. Okay, seeing no one else to speak, I will now close uh, public comment. Before moving into our ordinances, I'll simply just say with regard to the issue of um, the fire contract, although we are limited in what we can say, certainly as I've noted in the press publicly right now, we have spoken with our fire chief, we continue to, given the locations of our current firehouses, given the number of rigs that we have, and given the fire standard as to how many individuals you need to cover those rigs, We've got those numbers and we know those costs. We also know what, if any, savings there would be if we did not cover Glen Ridge. Um, could that mean any reduction in staff? Could that mean any other locations not being utilized? We have that answer. Of course, I won't be saying it out here. We're, we're in the middle of potentially uh, looking at a, a request for a proposal, so we won't we'll bias ourselves there. However, we know those numbers. We know those costs. And at no time will we accept any deal that did not cover or exceed those costs. So that's, that's why it is a simple uh, kind of equation. Um, we have all those numbers, and those are all standard uh, industry-based as to how many firefighters you have on a rig and who covers, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we know those numbers. Um, we'll be looking at uh, what we should, if we should put any, any numbers out as a bid, and anything that we put out will be enough to cover those costs or exceed them. So with that, I wanted to address that piece specifically. Um, certainly appreciate everyone's public comment. I certainly appreciate Mr. Stafford answering the, the update, as certainly a number of individuals spoke to the Midtown deck. And certainly we understand those frustrations and, and get. Uh, it's the nature of it, as Mr. Stafford has to sit up here and understandably uh, feel the frustration that, that everyone has and certainly understand your frustration of it. Um, you know, uh, I think the key is, uh, I think we're, that. Uh, was, was expressed here is not necessarily the challenges that arise, but the communication um, that, that's part of that. Mr. Stafford, I know uh, you hear that loud and clear and as best possible to communicate, you know, when there's a change in things. Obviously, we have uh, our meetings that occur, you know, twice a month or so and we get updates. Um, but certainly, I think anyone through the bid or directly through the businesses, when there's more fluid updates, you know, those can be shared. Uh, certainly, we ask our questions here for the public to hear the answers, and, and certainly I think everyone did. Um, I haven't heard frustration with the answer, I mean, somewhat, but more the please convey that as soon as you know it or as soon as it changes or, or updates. So uh, I think that's the key piece there. So appreciate that and appreciate you guys sharing it and, uh, and coming in and doing that as all, uh, also. Thank you for that. And, and certainly we all hope, by the way, uh, to get that online as quickly as possible, right? The net result is hundreds more parking spaces in an area that needed it, and we got that uh, largely paid for without taxpayer dollars. So that was a huge plus on all accounts. Um, we're all super excited about that. We, by the way, got it built in record time, <laughs> but you know now it needs to open <laughs> in, in in faster time, and that's the nature of it. And there's no one up here who uh, is hoping that it would go any slower or not be faster. We are all working for that as well, and we're asking our questions. So I um, wanted to offer that. All right, thank you very much. Uh, move on to our pending ordinances. We've got Ordinance 02210, which is an ordinance repealing and replacing Chapter 7, the Business Set-Aside Program of the Municipal Code of the Township of Montclair, and hereby renaming Chapter 7, Diversity Inclusion Program. I'm going to open the public hearing without objection. Is there any objection? Seeing no objection. I'm opening the public hearing from anyone who wishes, for anyone who wishes to be heard on the proposed ordinance. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? I'm not seeing anyone move in this direction. So without objection, I'm going to close the hearing. Without objection, the hearing is closed. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. I'm sorry, Mayor, I didn't hear a second. Second. Is there a second? Thank you. OK, great. It's been moved and seconded. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings. Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock. Yes. Councilor Price Abrams. Yes. Councilor Russo. 
Absent. Councillor Schlager? Yes. Councillor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Next, we have new uh, ordinances. The first is Ordinance 02215, which is an ordinance adopting an amendment to the Seymour Street Redevelopment Plan, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and and uh, and seconded. Uh, and this, of course, is there seem to be a few here from, from our Economic Development Committee. So I think we've got a few of these ones. But um, this one, as my colleagues know, is for the, the Verizon antenna that we have on there. And certainly, uh, kudos, appreciate my colleagues for working hard to make sure aesthetically it's as best as we could get it. Mr. Burr, appreciate you looking into some of the financials around it to see what we could or couldn't include. Um, that's appreciated. Um, any other questions, concerns, comments on this? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo, absent. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is Ordinance is, uh, 02216, which is an ordinance to amend Section 347 zoning of the Code of the Township of Montclair, and I so move. Second. Second. It's moved and seconded. This again deals with some of the heights, and I think we found the, the right spot here, if you will, um, to, to, to adequately address some of the different pieces and competing interests there. Um, but certainly it looks at those heights and, and certainly hopes to find uh, a, a piece that works uh, for us here in town. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Councilwoman uh, Price Abrams. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I see the language in the ordinance that refers to the 10 feet setback for all stories above the third floor. But as the memo attached describes the Portland Place redesignation to a C3, I don't actually see that in the text of the ordinance. So can you just show me where I'm missing something, please? Is it, I don't know if the memo was, if that's part of the other one. I, I was a little bit unclear when I read it myself. Okay, I'm not following. Hold on one second. I see a follower you saying. Both are addressed in the, they're both addressed in the memo. Yes, they're in the memo. I don't see them in the ordinance draft. Yeah. <coughs> the memo addresses both item C and item D. What you're talking about is item D. There's another attached memo, so therefore it wasn't clear to me that that's how it was going to roll. Okay, so to be clear, the only issue in item C, that ordinance relates to the setback of 10 feet on the stories above three. That's what I read in the ordinance. And yep, I know this so is looking, all looking at the language. Time, but just to be clear about it. Yeah. Yeah, if yes, if you look at the, the changes that you see there, yes, that's exactly it. That just I believe, I believe that there's a second non uh, some would say non substantive change right. dating changing the date in yeah. section three forty seven dash four A from November of two thousand sixteen to June of two thousand twenty two. Right, see that. Yeah. Um, but the memo again that is attached to this particular one also describes I think Mr. Stafford is, is correct. The okay, memo, well, the we'll memo, come to that in a moment, but the I, memo looks at also D. The only thing in C is the changing of the of the ten feet. Uh, and the and the date, as Mr. Stafford notes. As, as I'm noting, there, there's just another memo attached to that one, so therefore, uh, I'm just making sure we'll, we'll get to the next memo in a moment. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Mayor, it should be noted that the so the change on this particular zoning measure is only be uh, between Midland and Park. It's not all of Portland Place, not between Valley and Park, but just between Midland and Park. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Madam Clerk. Councillor Cummings. Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock. Yes. Councillor Price Abrams. Yes. Councillor Russo. Absent. Councillor Schlager? Yes. Councillor Yacovellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is ordinance, uh, where am I here? Ordinance 022 uh, 17, which is ordinance to amend section 347, again, zoning, go to the township of Montclair. This one's specific, more specific to mixed use buildings and their, uh, um, uh, their definition here. I so move. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded. My colleagues all see the language that's written here. Any questions or comments? Councilman Price Abrams. So thank you. To just continue, I don't know, Mr. Stafford, if it's you who can then show me where the Portland Place change is reflected in this ordinance because I, I didn't yeah. see it when I had I'm, I'm looking this. myself and I don't see it so I'll have to put the question to Ms. Talley and get back okay with thank you it is in the in item C in the whereas the third whereas we're back to the previous ordinance <coughs> yep I'm not talking about the memo we're talking about the ordinance right correct no, he's right that's where it is. it's in the whereas it's, it's not in the language strike through third paragraph It, it is in it's the, in the it's whereas listed. language. Yeah, it's listed. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk? I have a quick question. Um, sure. So 24 Elm Street, where currently it has two retail spaces. So once, is that going to continue? It, Those, is it going to maintain retail spaces on that first level? It's you, not retro, but so yeah, if it were to be redeveloped, the building or a future building, it, this would ensure that there wouldn't be a, a curb cut in the middle of the building. So there wouldn't be a driveway with a garage in the center of the building separating the retail space. Okay. And you see the aesthetics around that is the reasons is why. Yeah, that's why. Going to change it. Right. Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings. Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo, absent. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is Ordinance 02218, which is a fully funded capital ordinance providing for various parking utility capital improvements in and by the Township of Montclair, the County of Essex, appropriating the sum of $760,000 from the parking utility capital improvement fund. <laughs> for the cost thereof, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, and certainly, as we know, we appreciate all of these projects here not adding to our debt. Um, any questions, concerns? Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Harloff? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo, absent. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Similarly, Ordinance 02219, which is a fully funded capital ordinance providing for various water utility capital improvements in and by the Township of Montclair, County of Essex, appropriating the sum of $2.6 million from the Water Capital uh, Improvement uh, Fund for the cost thereof, I so move. Second. As noted before, and I know those of us who served know that just a short time ago, maybe nine years ago or so, all of these were resulting in more debt to the township, and we've changed that practice even when we're talking about big dollars such as this, $2.6 million, not adding to our debt. Um, really a testament to that uh, debt reduction plan, which has gotten us our bond rating, which has saved taxpayers millions of dollars uh, um, year over year uh, over the course of that time. So excellent stuff there. Uh, any other questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Harlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo, absent. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next, we've got our consent agenda items. Uh, without objection, we'll move items one. We see nine was already dealt with, but items one uh, through 25. Any to be held? Seeing none. Uh, uh, I so move items 1 through 25. Second. It's moved and seconded. Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herloff? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo absent. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is resolution R22-142, which is a resolution authorizing executive session without the public being uh, permitted to attend uh, in accordance with NJSA 10-4-12B. And the subject is personnel. And we'll also get uh, an update regarding uh, uh, legal as well, the legal pieces. So those are the two pieces. Uh, with that, I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We will now move into executive session. Thank you.
All right, thank you. We are back uh, out of executive session, so thank you very much uh, for all those uh, who are still with us. We appreciate that. Um, with that, I so move uh, that we make appointments to the various committees, and uh, as the clerk notes and will direct, I so move. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. Uh, we'll quickly also look at any reports. Mr. Stafford, anything to share? Uh, nothing else tonight, Mayor. Thank you, though. Thank you. Deputy Manager? Nothing, Mayor. Uh, attorney? Nothing. Mayor. Uh, assistant Attorney? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Madam Clerk? I have no report, Mayor. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor? Uh, Mr. Mayor, given the lateness of the hour, I have nothing to report, but we'll have the next meeting. Thank you. You bet. Uh, Matt, uh, uh, second ward, Councilwoman Schlager. Yes, thank you. I just want to send best wishes to the graduating class at Montclair High School next Tuesday night, class 2022. So, I'll see you. I'm sure many of us. All the best to the there, graduates. Right? Uh, Councilman Yacobels. Same thing. Congratulations, graduates, and happy 4th of July. Excellent. Uh, Councilman Cummings. I want to say thank you to the uh, DCS. Uh, Nishawang Park is coming along well in this renovation. Things look pretty good. Look like it's going to be on time. We are still efforting to find out when the pool will be opening to all the fourth ward residents and also the residents who want to use Nishawang Pool. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilwoman Price Abrams. Thank you, Mayor. I'll just uh, uh, share that the uh, really good news we heard from the library is that they have, uh, I believe it starts next week, they are expanding to seven days a week at the main branch and six days a week at the Bellevue. And that was with the support that the council brought to um, the library. So uh, really pleased for that. And as someone who ran in there tonight and they were open when I got there, it was great. Um, I did see breaking news that I believe the Senate did introduce bipartisan gun legislation, which may not be as robust as, uh, as I might like, but uh, a very good sign, and that's a positive. And one last thing on the local front is that uh, Council Cummings and I were both in attendance at a groundbreaking for an expansion of the Tony's um, Kitchen uh, facilities that are part of St. Luke's Church, um, but really to just continue to do the work that they do in the community and was just grateful with great appreciation for what they do, and they serve Montclair, Glenridge, and West Orange, uh, or it's Bloomfield and West Orange. Um, but th they've just been tremendous and, and keep expanding in new ways to, to meet community needs. So with that, I just say thanks to them, and I'll add my wishes to the high school graduates as well. Thank you very much. Of course, I could channel my uh, inner Councilman Russo and say when Kennedy was president, and talk a little bit about that, but uh, I will not. And uh, Councilman Russo, I hope you're feeling better for sure. Um, do do simply want to say, uh, with all the events going on around the township, uh, you know, certainly as we're publicly here, um, excellent, uh, excellent uh, pride festivities uh, out Montclair. Big congratulations, uh, Councilman Yacobelis. Well done, everyone else that involved in that tremendous work. Um, it was wonderful to be at a number of the Juneteenth celebrations that we had and uh, you know, able to stop over. We had multiple going on, which was great to see, um, and certainly seen so many of my colleagues at the various events going on all around town. We'll see everybody shortly at a lot of other ones as well, and especially as we wish our graduates uh, a big congratulations and certainly wishing them well as they move forward out into the world there. So with that, um, we thank everybody for their involvement in our community and the work that they do, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. It's moved and seconded. All in favor, please aye. say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.